Now to Yemen, where the president, Abed Rabbo Mansour Hadi, has announced a surprise cabinet reshuffle. It comes just weeks before UN-sponsored peace talks are set to take place in Kuwait. So to help us understand the ramifications of Yemen's political reshuffle, a change that we're seeing, we're joined via Skype from Beirut by Adam Barron. He's a Yemen analyst and a visiting fellow at the European Council on Foreign Relations. Adam, thanks very much for speaking to us. Could you start by explaining what's behind this latest move, this uh, change in the cabinet, in the vice presidency and the premiership at this point in time? Why now? It's, it's very interesting timing. Uh, what we're looking at is this decision coming just two weeks before peace talks in Kuwait are set to start, uh, roughly a week uh, before ceasefires is set to start. And we're seeing the replacement of Khaled Baha, the former vice president and prime minister, who was one of the few, I would say, political figures in Yemen who, even despite the war, even despite picking a side in the war, and siding with Saudi and, and Hadi was seen as a consensus -y type figure, someone who could build consensus. And he's being replaced with Ali Mohsen Al Ahmar as vice president, a former military right hand man of his now adversary, uh, Ali Abdullah Saleh, Yemen's former president. And Ali Mohsen is, I would say, in a country of controversial politicians, he's one of the most controversial ones. So it's a very interesting decision on that end, particularly considering Ali Mohsen's military background. It suggests that even as we're having these peace talks on the horizon, uh, that there is this possibility that on the other hand, the battle could be building up. So just to be clear about this, Khalid Baha was seen as more of a consensus figure. Appointing Ali Mohsen to the vice presidency is perhaps not the most conciliatory move just when you're going to peace talks. Yes, I mean, the other factor too as well is when you look at Yemen's current political situation, there's also these long-standing north-south tensions that have been building as well. Ali Mohsen and the Southerners, while they're both supportive of the Saudi-led intervention into Yemen, Ali Mohsen is viewed very negatively in the, in the majority of the South due to his role in the 1994 North-South Civil War. So there's, he's not just controversial in terms of people who are opposed to the Saudi-led military intervention, uh, Ali Mohsen is controversial, even among some supporters of, of this intervention. So it's a very, I would say it's a step, it's very, I mean, it's a very interesting move. It's a step away from conciliation, or at least that's how it looks on the surface. Of course, with Yemen, sometimes what's going on behind the scenes is much more important than what's going on uh, in front of our eyes. But it does remain to be seen, yeah. I think, how this move not just will be viewed within Yemen, but will be viewed uh, internationally as well. Yes, as you say, on the surface of it, it looks as though Ali Mohsen is going to be more of a controversial, more of a divisive figure compared to Khalid Baha. And what about the longer term implications of this? A difficult question to answer, but given that the uh, President Hadi is not in the country, could we be looking at possible positioning of Ali Mohsen as a future president? I mean, I would say all things are on the table with Yemen at this point. Ali Mohsen, as president of Yemen, I don't. It's very hard to imagine that scenario. Although I think there are a number of very powerful people within Yemen and outside of Yemen that would be very pleased to see that happen. Uh, the question is the fact that is is also whether you have enough people on the ground who are or very opposed to that. Uh, I I think there's. Having, most, having Ali Mohsen as president is the sort of thing that would really exacerbate north-south tensions. That being said, can he play this role uh, in the forefront of the war? Could he potentially use his long-standing relationships with uh, northern, northern tribesmen to sort of pave the way uh, for some sort of Houthi retreat from Sana'a? And of course, the key question is, does Ali Mohsen himself want to be president? Uh, this is someone who historically has ruled much more from behind rather than in public. Uh, one of a number of figures in Yemen who has preferred to sort of use, sit behind the scenes and, and sort of take care of things from there. So I would, I would have to question whether he himself even wants to be president. I would say he's very pleased with the fact <laughs> that, you know, roughly a year, a bit more than a year after having to flee Yemen uh, due to the Houthi invasion, leaving Yemen in the dead of the night, a wanted man fleeing for his life. He's now, albeit outside the country, but he's still now been appointed vice president, which 
I think when you look at at the region, that's one of the most impressive comeback stories we've seen in some time. All right, thanks very much, Adam Barron. Uh, good to get your thoughts joining us there from Beirut. Thank you.